At this 13th episode in the series, we're now heavily building on our past examinations. We'll review critical ones to begin here before directly discussing the Ice Age potential, and also by addressing some questions of timing. There are four that have been weighing heavily in the comment sections. Our review will help us address those questions and lead us into our Ice Age discussion. The first question is, how long from hypothetical micronova to Earth impact? And the answers vary based on what you mean. From a pure space weather physics perspective, the arrival of light occurs in eight minutes, then the relativistic high energy particles surging just behind it, then a few hours until the initial shock wave, but that will only be the smaller bits and that which has not collided along the way. There will still be plasma streaming alongside any larger chunks of the nova shell that fly on by, and that is likely to persist for days given those collisions. The second question is a popular one, and if we are going to assume the crust unlocks, then the two known things that can change the length of day already are powerful solar storms and geomagnetic jerks. A fast magnetic reversal could theoretically do the jerk, powerful enough solar blast could do both. Either way, it is a thermoelectric equilibrium at the low velocity zone of the mantle that would need to fall apart, along with its plasticity. If indeed that is what happens, the crazy answer to this question can only be derived from ancient stories. The time span is about one day. Vote and others might agree with this, including Major White. And yes, the big question on everyone's mind is when would this occur? The big event. Well, it is no secret that Vote believes the Nova will occur in 2046, at the end of the current Gleisberg cycle. We cannot be wedded to that outcome and do remain open to many possibilities. For example, a GSB, a Galactic Sector Boundary Crossing, which we described in a previous episode as being a potential trigger for a micronova, is something we would never see coming, would not be able to predict, and would be unlikely to be on an absolutely perfect cycle. Another way to answer the micronova timing question is with what you can look for. In a future episode, we will go over what we'll be watching for on the sun, and we do indeed vow to keep watching as long as we're able. I dedicate my life to it if you let me. As for a non-nova possibility, the data on magnetic pole shift does comport with what Major White described as being the final years, and my optimistic math still puts it happening this century, with more realistic outlooks seeing the advancement hitting critical points in the coming 20 years or less. And speaking of magnetic reversals, they may indeed not include a crustal shift, and they are not needed for a magnetic reversal to trigger an ice age but I wanted to go over another possible scenario of crustal disruption first, as I promised I would do. So the scenario where there is only a slight tilt change has three primary benefits. It would happen without fighting much of the general formation of the existing equatorial bulge. It would result in the Earth wobbling like a drunkard to regain stability, and during this magnetic instability, the auroras across the globe could put on incredible light shows. And finally, it is attractive to have a scenario where the poles remain relatively in the same place such that mainstream science claims that such ice has been there for long periods is satisfied and a major hurdle is overcome out of the gate. Those were just some fun FYIs there, now let's get to the Ice Age potential. The primary high energy plasma component of a nova burst is the cosmic ray. This is also true of cosmic rays around today, many coming from distant nova. We've discussed how the high energy bombardment of cosmic rays could affect the mantle and mentioned that they would add energy to the global electric circuit to amplify the wind disaster, but they also break out in atmospheric cascades and cause ionization of the atmosphere, which attracts water, dust, and which amplifies cloud condensation mechanisms. Princeton University's revelation about clouds a year ago helped solidify the concepts of nuclear winter and volcanic winter where the sun is blocked from heating the ground and the recent global collaboration realizing that aerosol particulates can't be to blame for global warming has put a greater focus on exogenous climate forcing. In fact, a surge in clouds feeds into itself and in the snow and ice left behind, their albedo. And after heated debate as recently as 2013, it is now well known that cosmic rays, the ones we're discussing here, can trigger cooling through their cloud effects. This is reinforced through volcanic forcing of the same kind, which is now known to be tied to cosmic ray bombardment at the magma level, especially in silica-rich volcanoes. And so with the grand solar minimum coming this century and with the Earth's magnetic field already weak and weakening further, 
The cosmic rays are already set to surge in the depths of those events regardless of rotation or other crustal change. If we get the nova, the cosmic rays go off the charts. When it comes to the solar energy there would be to block out, it would already be shrouded by the dust of the nova for days to weeks or longer, and even after it cleared, the dust in our atmosphere would persist as though a level 8 volcano had just erupted, which might happen if the situation got bad enough. The clouds, the volcanoes, the dust from the nova, each could throw Earth's temperature for a tailspin, and they'll likely be working together to do so. It is worth noting that the vote hypothesis of a rapid freeze-out is not impossible in the micronova scenario. Simply put, through the heat and electricity of the nova, enormous sums of water are evaporated, and through the loss of upper atmosphere due to shockwave impact, partial depressurization flash freezes much of it into snow, along with some surface areas, perhaps like with the mammoths, and then we have all the rest of the water remaining in the atmosphere, shock compressed and chilled into snow and ice as well. Again, we don't need the nova, but the heat from it, as vote suggests, along with the cosmic ray effects we've already mentioned, are legitimate concerns for cooling of the planet. We know the entire planet doesn't freeze over, and in Vogt's version, it's a rotation change only, no tilt, which would simplify the latitudes most desired as to what's tropical now. While we lack the natural ability to survive the cold, this is where human ingenuity has allowed our survival through the heat of man's red flower to the engineering of domiciles. Some survivors will ride out the cold, cold they never dreamed they could, in the same places that will shelter them from the wind. Others will be able to flee to warmer places, and remember, there is always the chance that this one will be smaller than the last, and that we won't have a major impactor like we did with Greenland 12,000 years ago. Remember, we all come from survivors. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.